take him. You knew he was there. That's That's awesome, fun. Mark. Good job. Nice job, Mark. Sometimes all you can do is shake your head in awe. I think this is one of those times. Welcome to this episode of The New Fly Fisher. Coming to you from Yellowstone Teton Territory and the lodge at Palisades Creek, we are on the make for giant brown trout, cutthroat, and hybrid trout in the South Fork of the Snake River. This big fish adventure starts right now on The New Fly Fisher. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new fly fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, Welcome to the Lodge at Palisades Creek in the small village of Irwin in eastern Idaho. The lodge is in Yellowstone Teton Territory and is located just off Highway 26 on a sprawling 22-acre property. It's perfectly situated with ample waterfront access to the world-famous South Fork of the Snake River. We're here late season for the unreal terrestrial fishing the snake is known for. Throwing hoppers and mutant stoneflies for big fish looking to prepare themselves for the winter season. It's mid-September and while most anglers have put their rods away in pursuit of game on terra firma, we've arrived to experience fishing big flies to big brown trout rainbow trout, cut bows, and cutthroat trout. Up first, we're with lodge manager and longtime guide with the snake, Justin Hayes. What separates maybe the lodge from other places and other lodges here on the South Fork is our ability to fish for cutthroat trout. Rainbow trout are in all 50 states now, I think except Florida, so all 49 states. Brown trout are pretty common. They've been planted in many of the states, but only here in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem do we have cutthroat trout and Yellowstone cutthroat trout are the species we have in the South Fork of the Snake River. And this is probably the strongest hold of that species of cutthroat trout in the lower 48 states. So that's one thing that makes us a little special. The South Fork of the Snake River is considered a blue ribbon tailwater with its origins from Palisades Dam. The lodge at Palisades Creek has access to five sections of the river totaling 55 miles of fishable water. Boasting as many as 4,000 fish per mile, the fishing seasons on the South Fork of the Snake span from ice out through till freeze out. With prolific hatches throughout the year, fishing from a drift boat or doing walk and wait are possible for most any angler. The river braids out the further away from Palisades Dam you go, offering some of Idaho's most cherished adventure style exploration angling. Taking side cuts and channels off the main stem of the South Fork of the Snake is a great way to explore and target unpressured fish. The river flows are constantly fluctuating, in turn affecting the hydraulics and physical dynamics of the river, allowing the river to be constantly changing with new braids and channels to explore often weekly. For those looking to check Idaho State Fish off your bucket list, the South Fork of the Snake is an excellent choice as the river supports the largest native cutthroat fishery outside of Yellowstone National Park. As the angler in the front of the boat, you really have to pay attention to what's going on along the bank. So Justin is advising me that as we're floating down the river to number one, look for the current and hit this inside seam of the current, mend it to bring it out just a little bit so it runs in right down the chute. Number two is 
It's the old adage, it's the fly fishing cliche, foam is home. You've got to look and keep your eyeballs where the foam is and put that bug in the foam. The foam is the channel where all the food is running. Get a little skitter on this ant, make it look like a, 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 a mutant stonefly skittering across, put it in those high percentage areas and it's going to increase your chances of coming tight with one of these big brown trout or cutties. I made a bad cast back there and um, I actually bounced this fly off a log and it happens all the time, uh, when you, whether it's a, a log or a rock or what have you. Now, in the dynamics of a fly cast, you have to realize that as that fly is traveling through the air, the eye of the hook is leading the charge. So if you think about it, the first thing that comes in contact with that hard structure is the knot of your tippet. Now, it's very, very smart to check your tippet after you do bounce it off. Check your knot to make sure that that knot hasn't been compromised, because you know what's going to happen, right? You're going to hook a 30-inch brown trout, and your knot's going to fail. Now, with these nymphs, do you want me to move this bug at all? Or let it I think drift. I think when you cast and then mend right after the fly hits the water, if you can give it a little twitch on that mend, that okay. helps. Okay. And then we want to kind of dead drift it so we're not dragging those nymphs, give them time to sink and Marinate. get down the water column a little bit. Okay. There we okay. go. Okay. All right. Okay. So we made a switch. We made a switch. We've been fishing this dry fly all morning and uh, hadn't risen anything. So. Justin said, you know what, let's pull over, put on a couple of nymphs. Put a, so we're now fishing a three rig system, a little bit different casting technique, but you know, not two minutes, right? Two minutes. All of a sudden we're hooked up. Nice. Nice rainbow. All right. All right. I love when they go to the middle of the river like that. Yeah, me too. Shallow water fish. Okay. Now we're not, we're literally not a mile and a half from the lodge. Um, and this river's fishing really well uh, the last number of days. The weather's changed, and hopefully the fishing's gonna even get better. We're good, we're good. Nice. Nice, fishy. Make that reel sing. Oh, it's a beautiful song in the key of C for catch. <laughs> Sweet. All right, nicely done. Great fish. Healthy. All right, let's take okay, a look at Okay, there you go. Nice. Now, this is a hybrid. That's a good one, 17 inch fish. Great way to start the day, man. Way to go. That's an awesome, awesome animal. Cut bow. Yeah, 17 inch fish. Great way to start the day. All right, we're gonna let him go and uh, carry on down the river. All right, great fish, man. Good way to start the day. Now, I could have bonked that fish, right? I'm a catch and release guy. I let them all go. But here in Idaho, uh, there's a special program going on, isn't there? Yeah, it's it's pretty unique. It's, it's contrary to what we all have come to know and love and learn about catch and release. Mm -hmm. The South Fork of the Snake River, the cutthroat trout, the Yellowstone cutthroat trout is the native species. Right. We've been stocking rainbow and brown trout in this river for about 80 years, not in the last 20. Recently, the rainbow and cutbow numbers are increasing and the, the pure cutthroat numbers are decreasing. Right. The citizens of Idaho every seven years help the Idaho Fish and Game come up with their management plan and, and they've voiced their favor to the native Yellowstone cutthroat trout. So as a result, with these changing numbers, we're trying to control the numbers of rainbows and hybrids, cutbows. So, Idaho Fish and Game, with the help of Trout Unlimited, mm -hmm. Orvis, mm -hmm. has pooled funds. And in the wintertime, they come and shock the different holes in the river, and the rainbows and hybrids that come to the surface, they plant a small chip in their snout that has a number on it. Really? You can't see that chip. Right. We don't know if that one had it or not. Right. They're incentivizing us to harvest these fish through a real live Western bounty. <laughs> Those chips are, are available, are worth $50 to $1,000. Really? So I could, if, if that fish had a chip in it, it could have been worth 1000 bucks. Absolutely. 
and you get sent a check in the mail for $1,000. That's crazy. Isn't that wild? That is wild. And that is, you can keep, catch and kill as many rainbows and cut bows as you want on this river. There is no limits here. Right, interesting. But, because cutthroat are king, right? They need to bring those cutthroat back. Yeah. Very cool program. Yeah, and as an outfitter, you know, I'm really supporting this because we believe that, number one, having cutthroat trout is a unique species in the world of trout fishing. Right. Number two, we, we all know that nothing eats a dry fly floating along a grassy bank like a cutthroat trout. I know, it's, so, it's actually romantic. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's fantastic. Well, that's a cool program. Uh, I might reconsider uh, the next hybrid I catch. <laughs> we can make a nice blackened appetizer for you this evening. Maybe a little lemon and butter for you. Nice. The next day, we're with Lodge at Palisades Creek head guide, Jason Pruitt, fishing a lower section of the South Fork of the Snake, the Lower Canyon. Jason, along with being a fantastic instructor, a, 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 he's easy to listen to, his tone and inflection, Jason doesn't raise his voice, get too excited about anything. If you miss a fish, there's another one. He's not a, uh, he's not a tense guide in, in that respect. Jason hunts fish. Like I say, he takes in consideration the angle of the sun, the moon, the weather, the bottom of the river structurally, the features, and he can deduce where a fish should be and knowing where it should be in his many years, he'll then get out and look and hunt those fish down and he's really successful. So today, we're down here on the, the, the lower part of the South Fork in Section 3, the Lower Canyon. And um, it's, uh, you know, the middle of September. <clears throat> Most of the stuff we'll see this time of the year is, um, you know, blue wings and uh, mahoganies, uh, especially for the smaller dries. So I'm going to rig this five weight up, this Orvis five weight 3D with a mohog and a uh, adult and a, a blue, ring, uh, blue wing crippled. So I'm just going to add some 4X to our 3X and build this up. This will be our little dry riffle candy selective fish rod. The other thing we have going on right now is uh, our mutant stones and our grasshoppers, which kind of have an overlap. And so um, on our big stick today, I'm going to put on a, uh, a golden stone, a, uh, what we call a SpongeBob or a circus peanut. And um, and then I'll run a, uh, a dropper off of that rig um, just to cover 100% of the water today, both top and bottom. And that will be our, uh, our mainstay throughout the day today. We typically don't deviate too far from that. This is Jason Pruitt. He's kind of a legend around here as the head guide at the Lodge of Palisades Creek. Jason, we are at Cottonwood. Correct. We're at a 15 mile float. What's the order of the day? So the order of the day is, um, you know, we're, we're here in the middle of September. So we're going to see, um, you know, blue wings um, and mahoganies that'll, that, that'll throughout the day with little dries. And then uh, the mainstay for us today will be throwing um, golden stones, um, mutants, and which will imitate a grasshopper as well. So right. we get the best of both worlds. And then just for a little something extra, we're going to throw a dropper underneath that I'm going to throw. Uh, today we have a mahogany nymph underneath. Um, so that we're at least covering 100% of, of, of the column in the fishery today. And um, we'll make adjustments accordingly. The fish always tell me what I need to do, um, but that's, that's what I initially start out with. Awesome. Well, I can never complain about throwing dry flies all day long and uh, we're gonna light it up. Yeah, so we're gonna, you know, most of our day today is gonna be pounding banks. I love to row, I love to pound banks. That's what's so great about the South Fork. Um, the other thing that affords us in a boat and floating 15 miles is we get to pick and choose certain gravel bars and ripples and flats. And um, I love uh, uh, the technical part of fly fishing. So I will hunt very skinny water looking for some big sippers. Um, if it presents itself to us today, I'm gonna take full advantage of it with you, Mark. Awesome, let's go. Sounds good. Buddy. Perfect.
One of the things that I've found fishing tight banks and fishing grasshoppers or Chernobyl ants or any terrestrial for that matter is you want to keep your flies in the water as much as possible. And recasting is something that you often have to do as, as things get drifted out. But here's a little tip so that you can leave your flies in the water and not have to pull them out. Pull off some line, jerk back and throw your line to the bank. And what happens there is the line actually goes past the fly and allows the fly, fly to swing into the bank so you don't actually have to pull the fly out of the water in, in choice water uh, where those fish may be. I, I, I try to teach it as much as I can to get people to understand that a mend is like jump roping. Imagine a jump rope. and We all jump roped. So when you mend, you're jump roping. So jump the rope upstream. Now, when you want it to stay in that fishy zone once the cast is there, rather than just trying to mend the first four or five feet out of the end of the rod, mend that line towards the bug. Push the line towards the bug. Then it keeps it in that key zone. Mend the other way, other way, yep, perfect. Come on, right there. That's the bottom end of the tran. Oh, nice stick, man, holy God. cow. That's outstanding. Wow, what a fish. Just the tiniest of little sips, huh? I mean, to remove that much line off of the water like you did. <laughs> Good fish. Oh, that was excellent. Barbless hook. It's okay. That's all right. We got the best part of it. Yep. You can see, yep, right on the confluence. Very good. Right there. Let her marinate. There he is. Well done. Now, Jason. Yes, sir. We're catching fish. Yep. But you're disappointed as you say that we're catching what you call pickles, which yep. are smaller fish. Yes. What does that tell you um, that's happening with the bigger fish in the system? So they're, they're either full, um, there's not a sense of urgency to eat. And um, a big part of it too, I don't believe we're on a, on a big moon cycle, but We've had no really big um, water drops or changes in our, in our flows. And we've been sitting on a high pressure for, the, for quite a while the last couple of days. That has a tendency this time of the year to put some of these bigger fish down. Right. It, it really does. And we see this every season um, um, right around this time of the year. So this is normal for us. This is what which, which allows these little guys to start to move in and eat in spots where we would typically catch bigger fish. It doesn't mean that they're not here. You no, no, oh no, we, I, we know they're here because we've, we've, we've caught them all summer long. It's been outstanding. It's just, there's a little bit of a changing of the guard right now. And it happens for about a week or two. The thing that will change it is a change in the barometer um, or water flow is what will change it. Oh, there we go. Very good. Nice fish. That was outstanding, buddy. Good fish. You were saying you wanted to switch? <laughs> I did, but I don't anymore. Uh, just to see if they weren't eating dries. Nice cut. Finally cut. get a cut though to eat a big dry. Yeah, that's a good fish. Well there done, we buddy. Go. Good job. All right, let's take a look at this guy. Here's a trick. So having to bend over to wet your hands. Well, very good. See, I learned something today. There you go, all right? I told you. <laughs> Good, 17 inch cutthroat, nice eight of fish. dry. Absolutely perfect. Well done, buddy. There we go. Beautiful fish, man. Awesome stuff. Oh, we're catching fish, there's no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, so I mean, that's, to me, that's a, that, that's, a, that's a positive. There was a little bit there when I first started this morning where I suspected to catch a couple fish and did not, and was like, okay, this is not what I heard from the guys. All right. Oh, brown trout? Nope. Cutty. It'll cut through. Come here, dude. So on tough days, don't let your confidence beat you up. Chances are you are doing things properly. You're, you're doing everything right. It's just the, the fish just aren't there. So Mark, what happens is, you know, a lot of times I don't let my anglers, um, I don't want them to beat themselves up um, if they've missed a few fish or they've made really good cast and nothing's happening. Um, just for the fact is, is when the river doesn't want to fish and it gets into this lull, which happens about this time, right in the middle of September, um, where we haven't had an increase or decrease in, in the river, 
typically would be a decrease because of um, irrigation demand is falling. Um, and we haven't had anything to change with the, with the barometer. Um, these fish just get in these lulls. And for us on our river here, a lot of times it can be section specific. This happens to be one of those sections. So I don't ever let anglers do that. And, and you know, we always try to leave on a positive note if we can get one more, you know, a lot of times they'll be like, I'm okay with heading in early. Um, can we get one more good fish? And I'm like, you know what? I'll go to bat for you. Let's go get that good fish. Save yourself for the next day. It's a whole different day. Um, different set of circumstances and it could be just absolutely outstanding. So um, that's a big part of, uh, uh, you know, what we do on a daily basis, guiding and, 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 and sharing stuff with uh, our anglers. They fight. That's one thing they do. Yeah. Cuddy. I got him. Or hybrid. It's a hybrid. Yeah. Even on tough days, these guys yep. are they, heaps of fun. Yeah, they make it. I mean, that right there made it that last little bit for me. That's I'm, I'm I like that. Yeah. That you, gives me another, I get another breath. I'm like, okay, okay. So what I'm encouraged about with this is even though the state is trying to get rid of hybrids and rainbows Correct. out of the system, it's in, an indication of a very, very healthy river when you're catching fish that are this big, this big, this big. You've got your classes that are coming up. It's very indicative of, of a good system. A good system. So it's happening with, with browns, it's happening with cut bows, and it's happening with cutties. So, yep, all um, of them. It's fantastic. Good, good float. I like that. Nice job. Yep. Well done, buddy. On the nymph again? That's, I cannot believe this after what the guy said yesterday. Is it a Costanza fish? <laughs> Costanza fish. Actually, a Costanza fish won't be doing that. I guarantee you it's they're not trout. doing that. It's a trout. It's a good one. Unless it's, unless it's belly whopped. Casablanca will not do that to us. Feels heavy, man. Bobo. Nice rainbow. Outstanding. Just after lunch, had a bite to eat. Well done, buddy. We get Decent ourselves boat. a nice fish. Decent bug. Great colors on it. Oh, nice big, stab. Big, big black back, dark yeah. back. Great fish. Look Beautiful at that. fish. So you put in your time, you soak some nymphs. Right. Battle through the day. Yeah. It's not a battle. It's Watch yourself, the nymphs on your hand. There you go, you're clean. Beautiful fish, buddy. Great fish, look at that. Clean, clean, clean. Strong, super strong. The great thing about fishing in Idaho is you can do this, you can pull over and you can, uh, you can get out and take a look at your fish and, and you're not passing over fishable water. Um, so that's just what we're gonna do. You all good, buddy? Yeah, I'm great. He's thick and he's strong. Well done, he fought really good. Yeah. All right, let's let him go. So Mark, a little little tougher day than what we're used to seeing. Um, but again, not indicative of, uh, you know, of what this river is uh, capable of doing. You know, you, 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 you fish long enough, you're gonna have, um, you know, a couple days that, uh, that are a, a, a little tougher than others. Um, but this river does have a tendency to, you know, produce big fish. Um, you know, it was here just a couple weeks ago on the lower stem that uh, my uh, my lead guide or one of my guides, Josh Hylison, you know, caught the new Idaho uh, catch and release state record, which was a uh, 32 inch cutthroat that was 15 pounds. So, you know, that stuff does exist. Um, you got to put your time in. Um, but today's definitely not uh, indicative of what this what this river can do for sure. Just a, just a just a tough day. <laughs> yeah, Jason, you know, we had a lot of fun together today. And you know what? I thought we fished it really well together. We fished extremely well together, I feel. Um, it just, the river just didn't hold up her end of the bargain. Yeah, that's it. No, I enjoyed it, buddy. We did everything right. We put it where it was supposed to be. Um, I felt we had the right selection. It just would not give it up today. Yeah, and yeah. unfortunately, that's why they call it fishing and not catching. And, and that's what makes this whole deal so much fun. And we get to come back and, you know, we're lucky enough we get to come back and do it again tomorrow. You bet.
It was a pleasure, my friend. Absolute pleasure. God, I'll fish with you anytime you want to go fishing, man. I appreciate that. The lodge is located on the bank of the South Fork of the Snake River, uh, right on the Idaho-Wyoming border in eastern Idaho. We're 22 acres. There's 13 guest cabins here. We accommodate up to 26 people comfortably. We're a family-owned business. Maybe that's part of what our guests feel when they come here. We're allowed to make our own decisions here, create the experience for our guests. We're able to communicate with them personally every day. That's what we do here. We try to take people fishing. We try to make them strong drinks, clean beds, <laughs> and uh, good food. If you are a fly fisherman that likes to dry fly, we have premier excellent dry fly fishing here. If you want to go for a big one and you're a streamer fisherman, we have big trout in that river. Remember the South Fork of the Snake has rainbow cutthroat, a hybrid cut bow, brown trout, Rocky Mountain whitefish, and a really strong fighting sucker. <laughs> but if you'd like to come out and drift fish with us on a big western river for big trout, there are a few places like the South Fork of Snake River and, and the Lodge of Palisades Creek. We meet Josh Jablow, longtime guide at the Lodge of Palisades Creek, and get ready to hit the river. All right, Mark, we're going to get going here. We're going to learn about what we're going to do today. Yep. Um, and like I said earlier, we're going to focus primarily on uh, dry fly. Great. So we got one big dry fly and uh, that thing is hopefully going to float. Uh, there is one peculiar thing that happens in that sometimes they will eat this thing sunk. But for the most part, we're going to use it as a floater. Okay. Um, on that note, if you ever do see it sinking and you see a fish kind of come out and ambush it underwater and then turn, we're going to set the hook on the turn of the fish because it's when the fly is under the water and the fish comes out and it eats it and turns, that's when we set them. Okay. Um, it's hard to do, but most of the time we're going to be looking at this thing, uh, uh, fish coming up to eat this. Great. Um, it's going to be real important today. This is probably one of the single most important things in what we're going to do today is that you have to wait for the fish to eat the fly. Okay. okay? So the finger is the fly. Most people miss the fish because the fish is eating it and they pull right here and the fly comes right out of their mouth. Right. Okay. So what we have to do, especially on the big ones, we're going to wait for this fish to come up, eat the fly and close its mouth and go down. Okay. And it's when it goes down that we're going to set the hook. So the, dif right? the, the difficulty is, is that you've got multi-species that you're dealing with and they eat very differently. Uh, brown trout tend to eat more of a smash. Rainbows tend to smash. Cuddies, which are, you know, the golden pumpkin of the river, they are going to come up really slow. Okay, you might have a brownie do that or a brownie suck it down, but for the most part, the cuddy is going to wallow up real slow and eat right here. But if you pull it here, you're going to miss the fish. Right. Also, if we set to the side, we're going to miss the fish. We don't set through the smile, we set up into the roof of the mouth. Ready? Take them. It's the timing combined with the bang. I missed the biggest fish I've ever seen on this river eat a dry fly, and I swear the mouth was about yay big. And it ate so slow and so big, I had to wait, wait, wait. And then when I set the hook, I lifted slow because in my brain I was thinking slow, right? Slow. You have to combine the slow with the bang, and it's that is going to hook the fish. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Sounds great. Josh has a form, a style of teaching that is easy to hear and listen. He is able to look at an angler while he's using his words and figure out which words are working to get that angler to do a physical action, whether it's setting a hook, stopping a back cast earlier or later. Josh also is a phenomenal fly tire and he's proprietary in the way he fishes the river and his method is proven Josh fishes not where everybody else fishes. He may put on the river in a different place than the other guides. He may put on earlier or later. He may wait. Josh fishes hydraulics and most of us fish banks and structure and features. You combine all those things together, his teaching style, the flies that he uses, and the places that he fishes. 
it's a really unique experience. All right, Mark, we're gonna talk about kind of what it's supposed to look like out here. Okay. We're gonna put our glasses on for safety because you never know when the fly is gonna come back at you and I've seen it go bad, I tell you what. All right, so we're gonna start low to the water. If we start our cast high, we only have half a cast to work with. Okay, so we're gonna start low to the water. Okay. okay, back, pause, forward. We finish at the water because if I come back here and then I cock my wrist, it's gonna go up and then it's gonna fall junky and short. So what we wanna do is direct this fly with a splat. You want the splat? We want the splat. So normal fishing, you know, we'll call it uh, Brad Pitt, river runs through it, we'll go, 15 casts and nice and soft. And then when it lays in there, it's nice and soft. We're not gonna do that. We we're going to, bell. we're gonna smash this thing in there. And when <laughs> that thing smashes the water, that fish is gonna be like, whoa, 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 what was that? You know, and when it does that, that's when we gotta really look at the way the fish is eating and looking at the right. fly. Okay, so we're gonna hold the line with one hand. We're gonna start low. I finish about two o'clock up above me and I smash it down. If you stop your cast short above you, it's gonna go short. So we follow through to the water, especially with the wind we'll have today. The shorter you stop your cast, the more the wind chooses where it goes. And we want to smash it down and be the chooser of where it goes. Loud and clear. Yep. Uh, we're gonna work with proximities today. So logs and things of this nature out here. It's the tautness or the tightness to the, to the stick that we're gonna be working with, okay? This accuracy shots. Accuracy. And we're looking for one to two casts. I call them shotgun casts. Because if you're doing 15 casts and measuring your line and putting it in there, by the time that you wanted you know, to do that, the spot that you wanted to fish is now a quarter mile upstream. So what <laughs> yeah. we're gonna do is one to two. We're gonna go back, pause, shoot it out. One cast is better than three casts. Two casts is better than three casts. But 15 casts, not so great. Right. Back, pause, shoot it out. We might have to do a little mini mend on it. But here's the problem. We don't have any nymphs right now, so there's nothing to anchor the mend. So when you mend, it's gonna try to pull out of the water and we don't want that, right? Yeah. So what we're gonna do is do a little mini flick mend, just a little uh. And it's that movement of the mend that moves the bug. So you don't mind that the bug is moving. No. You don't want it dead drifting. Yes. Yeah, so like uh, we'll say a lot of the time during the summer, we have nymphs on there. And we're looking for as long a drift and as long a soak as we can into a spot with nice quiet bug and zero movement on the fly. Today, we're gonna do opposite. Today, we're gonna smash it in there, maybe put it in your trigger finger and vibrate the end of the rod. Cut. Yep, we're gonna jiggle this thing. Back, pause, forward, maybe mini mend it. Jig it, jig it, jig it, jig it, jig it. Think of the fly as a rattle. Gotcha. Piece of cake. Yeah, easy stuff. All right. Hey, Mark, I'm gonna show you a little trick here that might help us with the sets and whatnot here in a little bit. Yep. Um, so we have two different types of movements with the bugs. We have a grasshopper, which kicks, kicks. We also have a stonefly, which skitters. Da, 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 da. The key to this skitter is making a V wake and stripping long while you're jiggling the rod. Okay. And you wanna be a little tighter to the fly than say you normally would on say nymph, nymph fishing say. And so we're not looking for the big like a wavelengths of line and the slackiness because it doesn't get tight until there, right? Yeah. So what we're gonna do, because some of these fish will be quick, we're gonna get down and tighter with less wavelengths of line and a little tighter to the bug um, so that we have more of a connection when that fish eats it. Gotcha. Now, do you find in those back eddies these fish will come and hit it right away or do you, do you generally throw a couple casts up there in hopes that you might lure one out? Uh, you know what I say, Mark? I say there's no usually, normally, generally right. fishing. Good. Because I think every time different. One day I'll come down and they'll be piled in this little spot or this and that. Come down the next day, nothing happens. All right, take them. That was awesome. Good That's job, good Mark. On cue. Yeah. Right at the base of the structure, right? Yeah. We're always looking for an eat as the, as the, as the current leaves the structure. That's right. That is the structure, is, is the current leaving the structure, if you know what I'm saying. It's an ambush point. Yes, sir. Nice fish. That is a nice fish. Hybrid. That was good timing. Everything was great. Good way to start the day, man. Dry fly. There you go. Can't complain about that. You want to kiss him, Mark? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> uh, take him. Good. You know what? <laughs> I always love it when they run to the middle of the river. <laughs> Oh, you got a nice save, Mark. That's a tarpon move. Good job. 
They run, the big fish tend to do that, don't they? they, they, they as soon as they get hooked, they yep. run to the middle of the river. Yep. I'm gonna kind of come with you. You let me know what you need or I can row away or you tell me what you need. I got him. Okay. That's a nice fish, Mark. Nice brown trout. Yep. We'll get pictures of this guy for sure. And you were just saying, you know, subtle eat, right? Yep. Total I mean, that, that subtle thing eat. That, I, to me, it looked like a tiny fish. You know what I'm saying? All I saw was the beak. Nice. Wow, Mark. That's a long fish. Great fish, man. Look at that, Mark. Beauty. I love the blues. Yeah. Let me grab your rod for just a moment here. Uh, what I've been watching over the years, uh, and everybody does it, and we're all guilty of everything that we talk about. But what a lot of people do is they'll start to get the head and the body into it. And what it does is it actually crushes your cast. So what we're gonna do is pretend we're balancing a cup of water on our head. Nothing will move except for my right arm. Okay. Right? There's no body punch because the body sucks up energy from the arm. This sounds like a, some sort of a proverb, but we want to do quiet body. Well, strong arm. Well, it's funny because we've got a 15 mile float today. Yeah. That's a lot of casts. It is a lot of casts. And you want to be as energy efficient as possible, exactly, right? Exactly. Good tip. Thanks. Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of like golf, right? Golf is all about efficiency of muscle. But yeah, keeping quiet body, strong arm, and that'll help get, especially through the wind. Because a lot of people, when they get, when it gets windy, they'll start to get that, that bob in there with the body. And it actually makes the cast worse because of that, so. And always remember, Mark, I am perfect. Oh, I, I learned that. Yes. I learned that when I got in the truck with you this morning. Exactly. I'm in three, two, one, twitch it, leave it there. Um, it's still good, Mark. Take them. You knew who's there. That's awesome, fun. Mark. Good job, Mark. Pretty cool, Mark. That is telling me pretty cool. <laughs> Welcome. Nice job, Mark. So we've been fishing for an hour. Yeah. And we've got the uh, South Fork Slam. We do, we have brownie, cutty, rainbow, hybrid. <laughs> yeah. You know what we don't have, Mark? It's whitefish. Is a whitefish, but there's <laughs> always a chance, Mark. They have a small mouth, but I tell you what, they will try to eat them. <laughs> what? Nice fish. One of the things that you'll get used to while you're fishing with an excellent guide like we are today is the direction that they are giving you. But it's not only their job to show you or to tell you where to put the fly, you need to use your own senses to know where exactly that guide is talking about. They're not gonna tell you, oh, you need to go 13 and a half feet to your right, right? What you're looking for is any sort of structural change, whether it's a seam, um, a log, a rock, a root ball, and most importantly, color change. Color change is, the, in my opinion, one of the most important aspects of knowing where to place a fly because that is the structure where those fish are. Generally, the darker it is, the deeper it is, the lighter it is, the shallower. So if you're looking for those drops, look for those color changes, put the fly there and get ready to dance with a giant Idaho trout. So things have slowed down a little bit this afternoon, yeah. just before lunch, nice brown trout, yeah. before lunch. Yeah. But they generally, as they switch over, will take a little break from the mutant stones and things like that until they get their, I can get them if you want. until they get their, uh, their afternoon chew on. And this guy did, and he, he ate all of it. Yeah, I can get, I get a hemo have, if we need it. These things have teeth. Yeah, nice job. Pretty. Nice 14 inch brown trout. Yeah. How orange that spot. spots yeah. are. Let's go. Take them. That was awesome. Hoist them up over the tree. That was cool. Nice job. Extra credit, Mark. You got them over the tree. <laughs> yeah, bring them right in here. That's what makes it fun, though, right? Oh, when yeah. You, when you've got obstacles and things like that, yeah. that you have to you have to dance around and play with. Yeah. Um, I'm good. To make it to make it interesting, I'm gonna get him in because I have to row. Yep, you're good. Right.
Equipment for this trip to the lodge at Palisades Creek in Yellowstone Teton Territory is as follows. For our hopper rig and our hopper dropper outfits, we were wielding 9 foot 5 and 6 weight fly rods with matching 5 and 6 weight weight forward floating lines. Leaders were 9 foot 3x leaders with 3 and 4x tippet. Our droppers were hung with 4x tippet as well. I find it I find it great that, you know, so many of these fish are almost predictable because of where they're living. They're living at the points where the the current breaks from a stick or a clump of grass or a root ball or what have you. And it's at that V where the bubble lines are and that's where those fish are feeding. Yep, exactly. They want to ambush this thing. They want to have the best ability to run from a bird, see the most amount of food and be able to expel the least amount of energy. And they also want to protect your lair, don't they? Oh yeah, yeah. Like they only have so much time to get back to the spot where they spent so much time trying to work to find. Okay, so right in that zone. Yes, exactly. Right in that zone. Yep. And then it should get eaten right in there. Take them. Good job. Good fish. Yeah. Once again, right at the confluence where everything is bubbly and slows down. Good fish, Mark. Bring him on in. Got him. Sweet. Spicy. That was neat. Keep on pulling that slot machine handle. Eventually you'll get some cherries, right? That's a nice one. Good job. Hey, oh, geez. almost in the boat, Mark. <laughs> jumped in the boat. <laughs> almost in the boat. So let's talk a little bit about timing here on these hook sets. All right. Um, each, each species of trout that you have in this river, you kind of have to cater your set to the, to the, to the species and the speed of the, of the hit, yes, don't it's, you? It's a major league pitch. Every, ca every, ca every fish different, every pitch different. Right? Yeah, I got a row. You need I to hold you. this. Okay. Can you unhook them? Yep. This brown came out like a house on fire, and the reaction is to really um, set the hook quickly, right? Whereas with the cutthroat, you know, you actually do have to wait for them to down it and to turn down on that fish or on that fly. So, you know, it's kind of a gut. It's kind of a gut thing, you know, as to how how to set it, but it just takes practice. And it also helps that you're getting opportunities to learn from. Exactly, right? Yes. The opportunities yep. are key. Yep. Well, Josh, as we're coming up to our pullout here, I gotta say that today was an absolutely fantastic day. Awesome, I learned sir. so much. Um, again, fishing with different guides all the time allows you the opportunity for education. Because no matter how long you've been doing this sport, there's always something new to learn. Well, that about does it for this episode of The New Fly Fisher. Thanks for watching. I want to take this opportunity to thank Justin Hayes and the entire group here at the Lodge at Palisades Creek for their unbelievable hospitality and awesome fishing on the South Fork of the Snake River. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? From all of us at The New Fly Fisher, we'll see you down the road and hopefully we'll see you in Yellowstone Teton territory. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,